Hallelujah. We got two more minutes to hear. Mm -hmm.
So as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship, I'm sorry I'm going to have to do some explaining now what we're going to be doing through this season of Easter. So before we start uh, the service, I do invite you real quick to look at the back of your bulletin. So the image we saw in the front of our bulletin, um, modern art for the ascension. And the service we are doing today is ascension. And here we read, Ascension Day, earliest Christian festival day back to the year 68 CD. That's really early in the work of the church. And as we read from Luke's Gospel and Acts, the book of the Acts of the Apostles, that Jesus met several times with his disciples during the 40 days after his resurrection. And it is believed that on the 40th day, Jesus went to the Mount of Olives and then ascended to heaven. Ascension Day, now we know Pentecost, Pent 50, so from Easter Sunday until May 18th, Pentecost Sunday's 50 days. And so Ascension, there you read, occurs 10 days before Pentecost, so it always has to fall on Thursday. Pentecost is a Sunday. Jesus ascended 50 days after, so Easter Sunday. Pentecost Sunday always will be 50 days. So if 10 days before was Ascension Day, it always be Thursday. So we've not really had here, you can do an Ascension Sunday, which you would celebrate that Sunday, uh, but we haven't necessarily done an Ascension Sunday service for a long time. But this Easter season, we're going to be going through the book of Acts. So it doesn't make much sense to jump into the middle of Acts and in our readings if we haven't first heard what starts Acts chapter 1. So Ascension, we are celebrating Ascension Sunday today. I got a little mixed up. That's what I am. Nope, 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 nope. I invite you to join me. Now that you kind of know what we're going to be doing now, uh, up till Trinity Sunday, I invite you to join me in the home to worship. It's found in the book. Shout for joy, sing songs of praise. For God reigns so over the earth. God has gone up with a shout. Sound the trumpets, sing songs of praise. I invite you to open up your hymnals for gathering on the hymn of glory. Let us sing in 393. And this is a hymn I know I believe you will recognize. And I do invite you to stand to sing this. And this is a hymn about the ascension.
of the ascension. And we have just said Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I love this hymn, but I think it leads us, if you look at the words, that Christ has ascended, which he has, with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But we started this service saying, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Where we're going with the book of Acts is that the Christ risen Jesus is still here. He is risen, he's ascended, but the living Jesus is still here. We shouldn't think of Jesus as up with God in heaven and not here present as the living Lord. So David, just give us the bells one last time and just a final hallelujah. So you don't even need your hymn to do the final hallelujah with the bells. Christ is risen, still here. Bibles are why they did it, other than, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the four Gospels. 
And if you got to the end of Luke, you would be in John's Gospel. But look at these first sentences, Luke 1. Well, since many have undertaken to set down an orderly account of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed on to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, this is Luke now, I too decided after investigating everything carefully from the very first to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the truth concerning the things about which you have been instructed. Okay, let's read the very first verse of Acts. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven. So one should really read the book of Acts, continuous with Luke's. But John's in there so we don't understand in the way our Bibles are that Acts continues the story after Jesus has ascended. So, you now know that the writer of Luke and the writer of Acts, same author. So today now we are starting Acts, and I will now read verses 1 through 11 from the book of Acts. In the first book, Theophilus, Theophilus means lover of God, so it could be written to us if we are lovers of God. I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions to the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, Jesus said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Which we then know has happened ten days later on the Pentecost. The Ascension of Jesus. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem to all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When Jesus had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. And they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The Gospel of our Lord. Just a little more explanation. Thank you for hanging with me. Okay, so now you're still open there in Acts chapter 1. Now flip to the end here, your Bibles, uh, to where we get the charts that spell out all the readings we do during the church year. So well, we'll, we're in year B, the Gospel of Mark, and we'll get to Mark this, back to Mark this summer. But I'm looking now on page 1480, year A. So there at the bottom of your page, there on page 1480, in yellow, you see the season of Easter. Celebrated Easter two Sundays ago. And now I'm looking at the column under first reading, that column. And there you see in the season of Easter, on your first reading, where normally you read an Old Testament text, in the season of Easter, there you see we read Acts. Instead of an Old Testament reading, we read Acts. And there you see the day of Pentecost. But nowhere do you see Ascension, because these are readings for Sundays. So Ascension... I shouldn't say Ascension Sunday, because again, it always falls on a Thursday. So we never really read Acts 1 unless you celebrate Ascension. 
So now I'll flip one page. There you see all the green, flip another page. Now we're in year B, year B. The bottom of the page, look at the season of Easter. And there you see again, all the readings are from Acts. So there you see, we go from Acts 4, 3, 4, chapters 8, 10, the end of Acts chapter 1, which is not the ascension. And then they bring us all the way back to Acts 2, the day of Pentecost. So there's no like this chronological of us reading through Acts. So we're going to kind of go more chronological through Acts. Now one last time, flip to your seat. I'm on page 1488. And again, you see there, for the season of Easter, we read Acts. So a lot of explanation. But I wanted to see that if one wanted to go through the book of Acts in the season of Easter, this is the time to do it. And that's what we're going to do. Thank you for hanging with me. So now you know why we're doing Acts in this season of Easter. So back to Acts 1. If you were to read very fast through the book of Acts, you could get through it in two to three hours. If you were, it, it's like if you were, it's, it actually acts as very much stories. Stories about the beginning of the early church. And if you read through it very quickly, you would see a lot of stories. Paul, remember Paul persecuting the church, and then Paul persecuted, the story starts out with Peter, though, initially. But you would think it's about the story starting in Jerusalem, then in Samaria, and then expanding to the ends of the earth. We are the ends of the earth. We're the Gentiles. But then we might begin to think this book was about us because we are the ends of the earth and this is where the early Christian church was leading to. And you would think it was about the Holy Spirit, that power. And the Holy Spirit does drive those first apostles because they really thought they didn't truly understand in the beginning that this was for everybody, not just the, the Jewish believers in Christ but that the Gentiles were to be grafted in. And you would think that this book should have been called, if you read it real fast, if you were to read through it really fast, that this was really should not have been called the Acts of the Apostles, but really the Acts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit drives the action, drives people in these stories to do things they probably didn't want to do, but the Holy Spirit has power and drives them to do it to get the words to the end of the earth. But what we are going to do this season of Easter is again, slow down. And we are going to look in the books of Acts where Jesus is the character. We read Acts 1, right? Jesus ascended. We think he's gone, up in heaven, ruling with the Father. And it's the Holy Spirit on earth driving things. But we are going to slow down and find the passages. Jesus will be the actor. Because we believe in the risen Lord who is still with us. And this was no more evident to me than being with my sister. Um, Easter Sunday, right before the service started, uh, Carol, our other sister, came, and, and they just, uh, Carol, I didn't have a word, but that uh, family had said, if you want to see Diane, while she's still uh, very cognizant of conversation, to come. So after service, we went right down to Chippewa to see my sister on Easter Sunday. And, uh, yep, very lucid. Uh, and my sister, Plan um, 
her entire funeral service. And we were, she had already picked out her songs, and, and, uh, and she was uh, talking with my sister Carol that she very much did not want cut flowers on the altar. She wanted no cut flowers. So my sister, other sister being much more of a botanist, flower person, um, to have seeds, seed packets will be handed out for everybody to plant. Um, real, I mean, uh, yeah, seeds. But anyways, I mean, to that detail, everything. So, so this week, um, she's uh, now unconscious since Tuesday, and uh, I head down Thursday morning, and you begin to wait. Many of us have been there, the wait. Um, But it was, as time went on then until Friday, it was very peaceful. I mean, as much as one could be peaceful, um, you know, they did the gurgle and that, and that cleared up. And then she's just been very steady, eight breaths a minute. So what's also happening this weekend um, at my Diane's house is that for the last, I'm thinking 20 years, the second weekend of the month is lay school ministry, school of lay ministry. Uh, Mary's a graduate, um, Leah, graduate of lay school, um, Gail Sari, graduate from this church lay school. Second weekend of the month. And when you have to travel from up north, people down there open up their homes and allow you to stay in their homes because it starts Friday night from 7 p.m. till 10, and then in the morning, they have class. So Diane Gray, um, her husband Gray, who was director of the lay school, and it's at a church, Our Saviors in Chippewa Falls, um, have hosted three or four ladies um, for the last 20 years. And these same ladies show up every Friday, the second Friday, for these years. This is the lay school weekend. And Greg said to them, because since COVID, the middle months, it's online. This is the first month they would be back in person for a week. And so Greg said, come down. Come stay like you've done all of these years. Well, it was okay. It was okay. So some of the ladies came in early on Saturday and sat with Diane and, and the uh, they get Luther, not necessarily Luther, but they get seminary professors to come in and teach their classes. And a good friend of Diane's, um, Diane Jacobson, a Luther Seminary MRS, if I didn't pronounce that word, um, was the speaker this weekend. And she was staying also that weekend, that Friday. So before classes started Friday afternoon, some of those ladies were with Diane, Carol and I, and that were in and out. Um, taking turns sitting next to Diane, singing to her, and, um, anointing her in prayers. So the hospice nurse, you know, they can never give you the exact timeline. They think you good advice, not advice, but they're... But she was breathing so steadily, not struggling at all. <coughs> So it was Friday, we're not sure. But the ladies then went to class. Class started at seven, they, they went to class. And then it was about 9.30ish, and uh, the breathing changed. The breathing changed. So we gather around. Um, me and family, and uh, then the ladies showed up. They got caught by a train. They've never ran into a train in 20 years. Um, they got caught by a train coming back, and I, I don't know if they were being texted that the brief, I, I don't know. But they arrived, and, and these ladies surrounded Diane, we were all around her. 
and then Diane just slipped away. And when I had said that night, that was, I changed how I thought about it. I, in my mind, was saying, well, Diane held on for them. She held on for them. And I realized, reflecting the next morning, that no, it wasn't so much that Diane was hanging on more than that the risen Jesus was with us at that bedside and that we were being a gift of time. That these faithful people who have gathered all of these years, that we could all experience and be there with the risen Jesus standing next to us. Because then they can be, I'm not saying there's a reason, but the witness then of the faith, of faith, I know I'm babbling now, I'm not making sense, I'm sorry. Um, but it's okay to be sad, but to be a part of the timing. And you, you can't make up timing, you can't demand that timing happens, it's all in God's hands. But that it was a gift from God. Now things that I know now, we sang Amazing Grace to her earlier on Friday during the day, and that's when her pastor had come, uh, the service of commendation, and, and uh, and I, so there were myself, would have been two other pastors, you know, in the Luther Seminary, her pastor. And her pastor says, well, what song should we sing? Should we sing it again? Well, of course, you know me. <laughs> we are going to, I mean, I invited them, let's do Amazing Grace. And I said, let's do all five verses. And I'm not dissing my fellow pastors. <laughs> I'm not. But they looked at me like I was out of my mind. Like, you're going to sing all five verses? I'm like, yes, of course we're going to sing all five verses. <laughs> and we know it from memory, right, pastors? <laughs> and I said, you know what? I said, I have asked my congregation to memorize Amazing Grace. Because I said, there may come such a time in your life when you're at a bedside, and you know that people have hearing, we've heard that, that it's a song we know that can bring comfort for many people if you can sing them. Amazing grace. Leroy has requested today. Remember we sent out last week, said, do you want to hear song today? We got a beautiful day to sing it. That's what Leroy wanted to sing. So in your bulletin, you will know I have not given you a hymn number. And I again invite you because David will have the words in front of him. He will know the words. And as you remember the words, which you can and will do, then sing with David as you come up here. But you don't need your hymns. We can do this. And then a beautiful thing I learned from this pastor, which I will now do if I'm again ever in a situation at a bedside. Um, she invited. Everybody gathered there to each anoint Diane instead of just the pastor doing that anointing. Well, it came my turn, and um, it was so easy because I knew immediately the words to say. Because us confirmation kids do it every Sunday. That's how we finish confirmation. We go to the and if there's been somebody in the congregation who has helped us that day, um, we include them. And we take the baptismal water, and we make the sign of the cross, and they know the words. Diane, you're a child of God. Mark with the sign of the cross forever, and nothing can take that.
We serve a risen Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I invite you to sing hymn 666, What Wondrous Love Is This.
unless you are people everywhere with food and shelter and health care and employment sufficient for their flourishing. O oh, risen God, we pray for all in sickness or in need that they may know your healing love and the power of the living Christ to bring life in the most difficult times. Keep us mindful of the hope and great power that we have in you as we offer your healing to others. O oh, risen God, we pray for all who have died and their families. We pray especially for the family of Diane Kaufman. That together you will bring us to your glorious inheritance of Christ, the one who fills all in all. O oh, risen God,
great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only living Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We are so grateful for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your woman will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. The night in which Jesus was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you for all people who have forgiven us of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and let us pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
together, we'll sing the fifth verse. When we've been there 10,000 years, we know this years to sing God's praises.
um, in all of her life as a servant. Eight away. Eight away. Um, as I fear in the dark and the doubt of my journey, courage will come with the sound of your steps by my side. And with all of the family you saved by your love, together we'll sing to your dawn at the end of our journey. Eight away. Go in peace, love and serve the Lord.